these are the 15 things that I have on my bucket list for living in Washington, DC. Hi, welcome back to another Coffee with Coleman, where we love to discuss Washington, DC, business, real estate, all that good stuff. My name is John Coleman. I'm a real estate agent here in Washington, DC with the Jason Martin Grow Quick Favor. If you like DC, then go ahead and hit that like button below. Let me know that you're here and enjoying the video. And additionally, if you wanna hear about all things DC and different aspects that I see about it, then go ahead and hit subscribe. I release new videos each week. I would love for you to see them. All right, let me get this out of the way to start with. I'm not leaving. I just want to figure out other ways to experience the city and things that I want to do. And that's why I want to put together the 15 things that are really on my bucket list. And I'm not saying that these things are easy. In fact, some of these things might be impossible now. I just know that some people did them at some point, And if I ever had my choice, I'd want to be able to do them. If you are traveling to the area, then these might be helpful. But if you're looking for better non-resident intel, I highly recommend you check out my buddy Rob's channel over at Trip Hacks DC. He's a history buff, he's a DC buff, and he's got an amazing amount of content on DC, which I absorb all of the time. I've linked his channel below, so go ahead and check that out. Make sure you subscribe to his as well. So here's the premise is most of this list I have not done, but there are some that I have but know that they're going to be on my list again because they were so cool and I think that they should be on your list too and I wanted to highlight them. My goal for this video is to be a little platform for something just a touch bigger as I don't only wanna share these with you, but I wanna plan on doing these for the first time or again if I've never done them before. So my goal, of course, is to document. Put them on the online, let you know what the experience is like or going with them, and you can hold me accountable. And heck, if you even wanna participate in these, drop me a note. I'd love to have you come along. Without further ado, here's my list. If there's ones that you've done, let me know below. If there's ones that you're really excited about, comment below. So the first one on the list, Capitol Dome Tour. Sure, visiting the Capitol building is amazing in its own right, but if you get the right hookup, which I did one time, you can actually go to the top of the Capitol Dome, which is a 360 view of DC, and it's quite amazing. I have no clue how to make this happen again, and I think I just got dumb luck. But if you ever find a way to get there, this should be on your list. Besides the view itself, it was really amazing to be walking up and going around the top of the rotunda, and you were right there next to the Apothesis of Washington, which is that like fresca on the inside of the Capitol Dome. And seeing that up close in person was really cool as well. Number two is Rock Creek Park. This one sounds sad because heck, how do you live in DC for this long and not hike or bike Rock Creek Park? Well, the answer to that is I don't actually know, uh, especially since it's something that I could take my dog Lola to and I love taking her to everything. There are maps and routes that you can find and that takes you all around and you can see all the nature, the architectural wonders of the bridges. And I'm excited to see those Capitol stones, which were the stones that were taken from the Capitol when they redid stuff and dumped in Rock Creek Park decades ago. Uh, that always seems to be a cool site and maybe a cool Instagram opportunity for myself too. Number three is walk through Lily Pots. This is not really a hidden gym, but it's an amazing spot to visit in the summer. There are boardwalks that go over the water. You can see all the thriving vegetation and it's a sudden sight to see. And it's, it's very, it makes you feel like you're not in DC. It's not the easiest to get to if you don't have a car, but I think it's definitely worth the trip even if you have to Uber over there. Number four, 50 states bike ride. Did you know that there is a street in DC for every state? And I'm sure you've been on a number of them. Pennsylvania Avenue is where the White House is. But how many have you checked off? There's actually a bike ride that features hitting all of these streets in a single ride. This seems so cool and unique and, and really, while I'm not a biker and it seems a little bit intimidating, it's something that I think it'd be really cool to try. And in my rather quick research, it seems like it's something that they have multiple options for. There's a really long, long ride. There's a shorter ride where you could just skim them. And there's a really short ride where you don't hit all of them, but so that won't be an option, but I'm looking into it. So maybe I need to start training hit that Peloton. Next is the Holiday Boat Parade on the waterfront. 
Uh, I haven't been to this one, but from what I'm told, it's quite the spectacle. Uh, for years, boats have been adorning themselves with tons of holiday lights, and they create a little parade on the water. And they've really enhanced the experience in the years by having activities, plenty of places serving drinks, and live music. So it's a good holiday thing to go to in early December down at the wharf. I think it's definitely worth checking out. Next is a Supreme Court oral argument. This one goes out to my brilliant wife, who is a lover of the law, um, because she's an attorney and, and she follows the rules too. Uh, while it be completely over my head about how amazing it would be to witness live, it's something I'd really like to see. And this is some of the most influential things happening in our country. The Supreme Court itself is a magical building and this is an experience that really can't happen anywhere else. And it might be a while till I can actually make this happen, but it's worth a shot, right? Next is the Inn at Little Washington. This is gonna be the only food place that makes my list. And that's because I'm going to be doing a video of my favorite eats. But from everything I've heard, this place is an experience. And as DC's only three-star Michelin restaurant, it better be. I just took a look after telling my wife I was putting this on the list and that we're gonna go do it. And it's gonna be for a special occasion. And I probably should have done that or done a little research before I did that because, um, it's more expensive than I thought it was going to be. So, I mean, if you're going to be staying the night, if you're gonna be doing all that stuff, it's gonna cost you about a mortgage payment to make it happen. So you might wanna start saving up now. At least it's breakfast and dinner, hmm? Mansion at O Street. To be honest, I don't know much about it, but people just keep telling me that I should really check it out. Just that it's partly a mansion and partly a museum and it's full of timeless treasures, secret doors and rich history. And for that very reason, I'm not gonna do that much more and exploring into what it is. I just wanna go there and experience it. So I'm gonna find an event, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna take in all that the mansion and O Street has to offer. Now we have Gravely Point Park, right by DCA airport. There is a pull off, like right before you get on the bridge to go into DC and you can park your car pack a basket with some food and drinks of choice, and you can walk as close as you can to the airport on this patch of grass. You'll sit down and you're gonna be mesmerized because these planes are gonna be taken off and landing right over your head. It's such a cool experience. And like DC is right across the river too. So you have this panoramic view of DC and you have these planes taken off. It's just really neat. And it's not something that too many people go over and experience. Now we have the reading room at the Library of Congress. According to the internet, the Library of Congress is the largest library in the world with over 170 million items in its collection. And while you can go through and tour it normally, there are certain steps you need to do in order to get an official library card that can then give you access to go to the reading room. And it's a special place to be. I'll be honest, I don't read all that much. Well, I read the internet and I guess that's sort of reading. When I was studying up for my old real estate exam, this is actually where I went to study and have some quiet time. And it was quite the experience and I'd like to go back there experience again. And I think it's something that other people should be checking out too. Now we have Arlington Cemetery. I've gone by the Metro Stop a ton. I've even driven by it while I was going around the parkway. It wasn't until recently I had an extended family member that was buried there. And that's when I found out how special this place really was. I mean, I've heard it, but I didn't get to experience it myself. And it was especially amazing to take part of some of the traditions that go on with the honor of being buried there. And while I don't necessarily recommend a funeral to be the reason that you attend there because that suggestion just honestly feels a little bit odd, I would take the opportunity to go to something like Reese Across America, or you can even schedule and find a tour online. So that might be a good way to take it in on your own time. Next is the Frederick Douglass House on Cedar Hill. It's in Anacostia. It's by that big chair that you see in pictures of Anacostia. Um, this was the last house that Frederick Douglass lived in and is a very important part of DC, US and world history. On top of it being a place that pays homage to this national leader of the abolitionist movement, but it also provides beautiful views of the city and a chance to step back in time, which is one of those special things that DC has to offer. Now we have something that's a little bit more touristy, but a twist on it, and that's going to see the monument at night. Sure, you've lived here. I'm sure you've gone by the sites plenty of times. Heck, you maybe even played some intramural sports in the shadows of the buildings of the nation's most coveted buildings. But there's something about walking on the mall in the quiet of night 
that never gets lost on me. It's a good time to look at the beauty without too much traffic from the visitors. And if planned well, you can even end up in the tour at a place like the rooftop at the W Hotel, where you can scan the whole area from the rooftop and drink some very tasty cocktails and look at all of the beautiful things that you just saw from afar with a little bit of a buzz. Okay, and now we're on to our last two. And honestly, these are pipe dreams. If you thought any of the other ones were hard, well, this is about to get turned up a bit. However, you can't try and make things happen if you never put them out there. So that's where I'm gonna be. These are my top two bucket list items and we'll see, maybe I'll make them happen. The first of those is the White House Correspondence Dinner. In comparison to the average person in DC, I am not well versed in politics. However, there is something about this event, the people you rub elbows with, the glitz and glam of DC. It's like the Oscars of DC. It's, it's where everybody wants to be and be seen. Some quick research has told me that I'm probably not gonna be able to pull this off, but who knows? Maybe you, a fan of Coffee with Coleman, will have a plus one one day and really just wanna take me with you because man, I seem like so much fun. Or if you have some tips on how to do it, how to get a part of it, let me know. It's obviously on my bucket list. And the last thing, the last thing on my list, but the one that I would fight the hardest to do is bowling at the White House. And let me be blunt, I've done a general tour of the White House and it was fine, but I didn't walk away overly excited about it. I've heard of the West Wing tour is a whole lot cooler and so maybe I'll try that at some point. However, a long time ago, I saw a chance to bowl at the White House was being auctioned off as part of something. And man, I was just too plain poor at that point to do it. Times have changed and who knows, maybe they don't even allow it anymore but it's one of those things I really want to do. And honestly, if I could go back in time, I'd do it. I'm not even good at bowling. Heck, I probably would throw the most gutter balls in those lanes history, but I'd have a lot of fun doing it. And man, that is my number one thing on my bucket list. So again, those are mine. Those are my 15 things of the items I wanna do. Some are gonna be easy, some are impossible. Which ones have you done? Which ones do you wanna do? And what did I miss? I know seeing a show at the Kennedy Center was probably on there, but I wanted to keep 15 as my number, so it didn't quite make the list. But if I had to give you a bonus, it would be seeing a show at the Kennedy Center and taking all that. And they have a little new cocktail garden off to the side or restaurant on the roof, so you can make a whole night of it. So anyways, I'm going on a tangent. So that's all the time I had for today. That's everything I put together. Again, those are my 15 things. If you want a list of them, I put it in the comments below. You can download the whole list and you can have access to all the information that I had. And if you wanna join in any of the ones when I'm creating videos about these 15 things, if I get to create 15 videos, well, let me know. We'll get on the schedule and have some fun together. All right, thanks again for stopping by another Coffee with Coleman. Peace.